You're right now, Mark. Can you? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Hi, Beck. Hi, Beck. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Yo, what am I doing wrong? No, you're all right, Rashley. Okay. You see, you're all right. Yeah. And we can hear you. Okay. Trouble with your virtual background, Brian, is that you sort of keep seem to dis keep disappearing into Clare College in the oh, background. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite weird. It is. It doesn't look like you're sitting on the grass. Putting no, it no. <laughs> Hello, Rosie. Hello. 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 Price court passed. Yep. yep. Okay. Okay. We're all good to go. Yep. Right. Um, apologies for absence, please. Um, Anna and Tony Fell, Mr. Mallows, Tony Orgy being about eight. Ed Elderfield. Apologies. Oh, sorry, and Claire. Thank you very much. Right, uh, public participation time. Um, I'm assuming we have to, uh, Mr. Dave Williams? Yeah, it's just me, Kieran, nothing that I want to mention. No, uh, Mr. Dark? <coughs> no, I'm not. It's hush, ill prepared, no, thank you very much. <laughs> no, one. hello, hello, Kieran. Right, um, declaration of interest for this meeting. Uh, no, we're going well. Oh, thanks. Can I just suggest that we all mute ourselves, or Joe can, unless we're actually speaking. If you can all and, do it. Uh, also, can we, can we, um, I'm mentioning that, can we make sure we stick our hands up for if we wish to speak as well, please? Um, well, I'm assuming we've all read the minutes um, for the last full parish held on the 10th of March 2020. Do I have a proposer? Jane, do I have a seconder? Varsney, all those in favour, please raise your hand. Joe, there's just um, a typo on item 249 where unanimous was missing its final S. Okay. Um, um, sorry, uh, sorry, no, uh, I just recall Joe that I'm abstaining from voting just because I've been honest, I haven't read them. Okay, um, to confirm the and sign minutes for the extra full council meeting held on the 7th of April. I'm assuming we've all read those. Can I have a proposal for those, please? David, Jane, second. All those in favour? Brian, right. are you voting? Are you abstaining, Brian? Thank you. Okay. Matters are rising. None. Planning applications and associated manners. Planning de decisions for details online. Um, S0224 20FL single story rear extension, side extension, garage conversion, and front dormer extension at 14 Aston Way. Commission granted. So, all noted. Uh, counts for the month of March. Have we all seen seen them? Any queries on the accounts? Yeah, I've, I've had to add another two today. Um, well, this afternoon, there's two for red graphic for the chairman's report. Quite right. happy to send, well, I need to send you obviously all the, the updated sheet, um, but it just brings the total to 69, um, 724.54. So that's the, so, I've just so added the you. chairman's report. Pardon? The two graphics, red graphics, yeah, for the printing, and we got charged for errors that yeah. go off. So, what was the total again? Yeah, 69,724 pounds 54. Right, what about the red graphics? That's with it added, yeah, okay. the two added. Yeah. 
right. so that brings the total for the accounts of March for checks to that. Okay. Kieran's got his hand up. Kieran? Kieran. You're muted. Yeah, I know. I had to find the mute button. Sorry, just um, wanted to check. Um, are we sure that that chairman's report is going to be um, distributed? Um, okay. Uh, Claire? Unfortunately, the delivery company that you'd agreed on are not delivering at the moment. Um, I have contacted another two who are also not delivering at the moment. Um, so at the moment, we're not sure whether it is going to go out. Hopefully it will go out soon. It's just going to have to wait and see what happens. I, I think there is, there is a risk um, in delivering items. Um, I would suggest if Red Graphic have designed it, that you ask them to save it as a PDF and we distribute it by email and on the Source and Facebook page. I we have had it printed. That, that's going to be better. Oh, really? It's been printed and, yeah, collected. That's a pity. Mm. Uh, Boa? We consider um, doing Black Post, expensive as this is. I could try and get a quote for it. Yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. Thank you. You, just, you would just and need to know what the rate would be. Sorry, I didn't catch that back. What did you say? You wouldn't need to get a quote, you'd just work out what the postage rate would be, but then you'd have to put them all in envelopes, so that would be a lot of work. Uh, mm. No, the, no the, the office do, yeah. would deliver them loose, yeah. as yeah. is. Yes. Oh, I, I did email the post office today, um, so hopefully they'll get back to me on there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. David? Point's already been made. I was just going to say that they, you know, they, they do a delivery service, which is not postage if you see what I mean. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's, but yeah, Brian's made the point. Yeah, yeah. Go. Um, I just wanted to ask as well, just to get in agreement. Um, I've obviously spoken to Kieran and Kevin about it already. Um, if we have it minuted, we can do it, but to all the checks this month or until we're, we're back to normal per se, we can do, if I can do back to payment so that I don't have to obviously go to two councillors' houses to get the cheque signed. Kieran. Yeah, so I was just going to propose for the record that um, for um, a maximum of six months or to be reviewed after six months, that payments could be made just by the clerk through online banking and not needing a second signature, provided those payments are agreed in the normal way. You'll all see I'll them before that. Parish anyway. No payments are made till after before Parish. So, yeah. so you, uh, Kieran, by a that. second. All those in favour? Thank you. you. Know, excellent. Uh, right. Oh, can, to... you, yeah, can you agree, sorry, can you vote to agree the accounts as well? I, yeah, we uh, no, we can't because we haven't had full details. So you haven't told us the amount. Yeah, so I emailed them to no. you, and I've just told you how much the the to new no, total no. is for the two red graphics. You didn't say what what those two items cost. So do you want to just tell yeah. us those two items, Joe? The, so the, the design cost and the printing. Right. Cost. So um, the setup charge, and we got charged every time there was an amend, was one hundred and sixty one pound ten, and the printing of the report is two hundred and nineteen pound sixty. Okay. Can I have a proposal, please? Sorry, well, can sorry, um, can I just ask for confirmation of the total amount of checks then? Because I thought you said over sixty thousand. I did yeah. because we got the tractor that was agreed, and that's all yeah. gone through. So I need it on the accounts just so it shows that we've made that payment. The tractors there's at forty nine thousand. Yeah. So um, Brian, sorry. with the original agenda. Um, there was a set of accounts and then I think there was an updated version um, which was e emailed ahead of yeah. the meeting yeah. Yeah. and then um, Joe's just asking for those two red graphic things to be added to that list which is why it now makes 60 odd K. Oh, yeah. So it's the checks plus known? That's just the checks total that amount. So okay. I sent for a yeah. new checklist yesterday because obviously I've been to the office and collected more posts and then I've added the two red graphics which I got through today so I'm trying to add them on so they get the payment plus it's year end so I need to try and Sorry yes I, I understand all of that I, I'm just going to let it go because I'm sure you, 
you've done the job right. It doesn't really just tell you what I've got in front of me. So maybe I've missed a, an email. So I can see um, yesterday's checklist totals 69343.84. Yeah. Is that the one you've got? Yeah. And then, and then Joe's adding about add 300 pounds. 61 pound 10 and 29 pound 60. Uh, no, two hundred and ten pounds sixty. Sorry, to, yes. <laughs> Sorry, my, my... could you share your screen to Brian, maybe? Yeah, would you mind? So, are you, are you, oh, sorry, Joe, are you talking about VAT included amount? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, so I just need to add the ten grand onto that, and that's why it makes sense. Thank you. There you go. Cool. Yeah, that's. Um, that's Thank a different... you. So proposed, right. proposed to um, accept the accounts. Uh, Kieran. One second. Thank you. Sorry, bear with us, we've lost Kevin. All in favour? Yeah, I'll just wait and hold on, let me just get Kevin back because... He's back um, okay, he's down, he's down there, I think. Down there. Oh, is that? He's back, sorry. Right, okay, yeah. <coughs> All those on in favour? Well, we we've agreed the accounts. Yes, yeah, this is we're voting on it now. Sorry. Okay. Thank and, you. Uh, we we agreed the proposal for it by um. Right back to payments. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, time bank update, please. Hello. No, actually, you've missed out two nine seven, Kev. Standing orders. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. To discuss post council standing orders with regards to remote meetings. Sorry, Emma. Uh, comments, please. David. Uh, yes, I just uh, asked for this to be put on because we were assured by, um, by NELC that, uh, that they would be issuing uh, model standing orders for, um, uh, to, for, for, for conducting e meetings, basically. Uh, as far as I'm aware, those haven't come through yet. So I don't know whether Joe's seen anything. No. They were supposed to have come. They were supposed to have come through about the middle of last week. Uh, rather than try and do standing orders on the hoof, I would I, I, I'll propose that we wait until those are actually available. <clears throat> Brian, yeah, just to, to say, um, having read that original draft legislation and then the notes that came out with the statutory instrument, instrument, I think we're already effectively ahead of the curve. Yeah. what we're doing. I think uh, we are. So um, I don't see anything that's uh, particularly deficient in what we're doing. I'm uh, happy to um, do a temporary addition to the standing orders if we think we need it. Um, but it's uh, what we're doing right now is perfectly in line with that uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, statutory instrument. So. I would agree with that. I don't think we actually need to change anything. We're, we're, we're compliant in all, everything that we're doing, as Brian's just said. So, uh, are we all happy to carry on uh, carry on as per? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, anyone else got any comments to make on that? No? Um, time Bank, Emma. Hello. Um, yes, so I didn't know how much information you would want. Um, I've written down various bits that I can obviously send in that can go the minutes. Um, so we've started a virtual coffee morning, um, which is going well. So we've had six so far. Um, and we have between nine and 16 people attending. So um, yeah, they're going pretty well. Um, so we do the Monday as if it was normal coffee morning, 10 till 12, and one of the Time Back members does a quiz for about 30, 40 minutes. Oh. Um, yeah, it's, re it's a really good way. So we basically have chit chat in the beginning, a quiz and then chit chat, just because obviously it can be quite a long time, two hours, just to chat. So that's been really good. Um, and then they basically said they would like to do another one. So they've set that up themselves pretty much. So Time Back members run the Thursday one and they just have an hour. Um, so that's really good and a lot of them have commented, I've written down some of their comments because obviously I can use it for my future reports, but things like um, feeling isolated and stuck at home, it's so lovely to see people and chat with people and such like that. So um, I've been scribbling down where they've said comments like that. Um, 
and sharing resources with each other, um, ideas, gardening tips, all these sort of things. So it's been um, a good way, I think, for lots of people that perhaps wouldn't have contact with many people to have that. And um, some of the Time Out members have helped some of the members that are not so computer literate with setting that up as well. So um, they've helped. Um, so we have a few that don't have webcams, but that can see everybody else and still have conversation and things. So that's really good as well, because there are a few that wouldn't really use computers that much normally. So that's been really good. Um, other bits. So we are obviously Time Bank members, the ones that are able to, that are not um, over 70 and not have medical conditions, have been helping with various things like shopping, prescriptions, um, phone calls. And we are offering to do things like walking dogs, but so far we haven't needed to. Um, but that is there if, if people want. Um, a lot of the Time Bank members just do it sort of between themselves because they know each other now through Time Bank. Um, I get the odd request in that I then sort of help um, sort of put a Time Bank member to. Um, we do get some requests from other places like Care Network and um, Kelly and Joanna are at the Grant to Medical Practice. Um, and I've, today I spoke to Gail from um, Mutual Source and Mutual Aid just to talk to them about things and see if there's any way we can support uh, just with perhaps more vulnerable or older people that want somebody that has been sort of vetted. Um, so we've had that conversation today. Again, not offering our services out to everyone because we have to be realistic with sort of what we've got and because a lot of the Timac members are not able to do things because they're so socially, um, because they're uh, isolating themselves. So, um, other bits. So, having contact with the churches and some of the other sort of local groups, just to sort of check in and see if we can be supporting together. Um, I do sort of lots of regular updates. So, ringing a lot of the Time Bank members who don't use computers as much, or uh, just sort of to check in because they perhaps don't have as much contact with people. Um, emailing at least sort of twice a week to every Time Bank member. Um, with a mixture of sort of useful information as well as sort of funny random things for them to do that might entertain them. Um, and some of that comes from things I find and then some of that comes from other Time Back members sending me things that we then sort of send out. Um, including things like little picture quizzes and random bits. Um, but also some stuff around like um, from um, the government around sort of myths around coronavirus and things to try and help people and around sort of managing isolation and anxiety and things so trying to do a huge sort of mixture really with that um so i mean a lot of my time is spent on the phone or doing emails to time like members and to other groups really um i'm just seeing what other bits i've got i mean that's the sort of the main stuff i'm doing and then i'm obviously still doing the behind the scenes stuff like reports and databases and spreadsheets and all that exciting stuff as well. Um, that's pretty much the main, my main update. Does anybody have any questions or want to check anything specific? Um, just one thing to mention, Emma, I'm, I started a, a Facebook page just for sourced from businesses just to list all the opening times. So I started it um, at Easter to list all the Easter opening times. Um, just to, I mean, it's mostly the high street shops and I haven't managed to get over to Londis to check their times. Um, but I don't know whether that's worth mentioning in an email in case it's useful to anyone. It's basically, you know, to so that nobody schleps all the way to the high street and then discovers that things are actually shut. Um, so I've updated it all today with the sort of coronavirus opening times for everybody, which have now replaced their Easter opening times. Yeah, bro, I am um, joined that earlier, Beck, and I will... Um... I will both tell people the, for the ones that are on Facebook, but what I've been doing as well is gathering stuff from the Sourced on Facebook as well and from that email that you send so that people that are not on Facebook, I've been putting that in my own email to them as well because then they can yeah. access that. Yeah. Um, and then the ones, sorry, but the ones that don't have um, internet, I've been telling over the phone. Oh, brilliant. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to get a, a website sorted out as, as well for people who don't have Facebook, um, but it was just, it was so quick and easy to do the Facebook page, I thought I'd get that sorted first, and then I'm just um, working out all the details of the website, um, but I'll hopefully get that done fairly soon. Yeah, no, it's Bill, yeah, I joined it earlier, and um, it was quite useful just to check about times for myself as well as being able to tell other people, so yeah, thank you. Right. Anybody else got any comments? No? Okay. Um, so one other thing um, 
Joe, we were talking about was about overtime. Oh, we can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we've got that on the agenda, um, yeah. but it's obviously in camera. So uh, okay. I can whiz you a quick text to get you back online if you want to. No, that's fine. Yeah. Just because obviously I, I knew you wanted me to mention that. But so will you lot mention that when I'm not here? <laughs> okay. Um, if you need me, I'm around, obviously. Where am I going to go? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so if you want me to come back, obviously I can do, that's fine. Okie dokie. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Very Thank much. you very much for that, Emma. Yeah, thanks, Emma. Thank you. Um, so can I leave now? <laughs> yeah. You can go <laughs> to the garden now if you want. Mm, no, it's a bit cold. <laughs> oh. All, right. All right. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Right. Um, to agree, clerks, to enrol to as members of Capalc 2020-2021. But this is, I mean, we've just agreed it in the accounts, but this is um, obviously to the affiliation for Kapalk. It's actually for the council and not for just the clerk. We all, David proposing? Yes. Thank you. Uh, seconder, Neil, all those in favour? Keep your hands well, up. We, we already agreed to spend the money. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Thank you. All right. Um, to agree the code of conduct. Can I take this one? Yeah, um, so these next three items are things that were um, carried over from uh, F and GP from February when um, we didn't have the documents with us in March. Um, so they're, they're documents that went through F and GP, were slightly amended, and um, you now had in your packs the, um, the updated versions. So the first is the code of conduct. Uh, I don't think we made very many changes um, to this from uh, how it had been previously. Any comments? No, so can we have a proposer? David, seconder, well, Jay, Kieran? No, that's fine. I was gonna say, shall I propose it, but it's already done. Yeah, uh, all those in favor? Yep, everyone, thank you. Well, away you go again, Kim. <laughs> so the next items were the um, terms of reference. We um, reviewed them for all the committees except um, staff management because um, the plan is to have more of a, a think at F and GP about um, staff management. So um, we didn't make any changes, any significant changes to these. They were um, just to tidy things up to reflect um, current usage rather than um, uh, you know where things had already changed, and also to update the um, expenditure level that that the um, committee chair could make um, in emergencies. So I just included them all in one PDF for. So, Kieran, do we need to add staff management before we approve these as a whole? Um, I wanted to, um, I looked through them and there are some examples of older language and there are an awful lot of capital letters scattered all around. So I wanted to just give them a quick sub edit to tidy them up a bit. Um, so do you want to postpone agreeing them till we've had a chance to add in staff management? Or can well, I just say that I'll, I'll edit them just to take capital letters out without changing anything else? And the old um, chairman needs to take, change the chair. Got stuff in there. I don't mind. I mean, I would have thought that... Um, um, we could approve them now and, and, and do that before we publish them. Um, or we could wait, given it doesn't make a, a huge difference. I was going to say, I don't think it makes a lot of difference if we... Um, can we can we approve them without staff management and then come back to staff management? Well, I don't know. I mean, who's going to... You know, it's not really going to affect our... For a start, committees aren't meeting at the moment. So um, it's not going to be a major um, thing. It's just it was on our list to update them. We updated them. Um, they need to be approved. So um, why don't we? Yeah. So why don't we um, postpone them then? Um, review, you know, agree staff management uh, um, at the t at the time, and then make an edited version. Bring that back yeah. then. I think it would be better if they were complete. Yeah. David? I, was, I, was, I, was, I was just just going to suggest that we um, we approve what we had before us. I mean, if uh, uh, you know, if if if, 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 um, if Beck wants to reformat, then that's fine. I mean, if there's no alteration of substance, I don't see an issue with that. Any other comment? 
So do I have a proposal that we we uh, well, accept what different... they are now? Well, and and that Bex edits as necessary. Well, I, I was proposing that we wait until we've added staff management and then approve them as a whole because it just seemed tidier. Yeah. But vote on that if you like, and if people want to improve them, approve them as they stand now, then you can do that instead. Right, so do I have a, a seconder for, for Bex? Okay, uh, Colleen, right, all those in favour of deferring till a later date? Actually, I think I see a problem with it. Hold on, keep your hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six. What is your hand up, Kevin? Yeah. Sorry, six. <laughs> is it six? I can't see. Um, I can't. <laughs> One, two, three. Sorry, thank you. Sorry, I thought I had seven. Hang on. Four, five, six. Seven with Beck. Six. Yeah, I've got seven with Beck. And those, are, those are against. Two. So, the hoops are ready. We've got who else? Rajni, I think. Did you you vote? What's Rajni doing? Rajni, you're against? Yes. Yeah. So three against. Right. Okay, so we'll we'll do them all at once once we've done staff management. Okay. All right, Kieran. And then finally, uh, risk assessment. Um, which we changed very little. Um, the biggest change was um, uh, colour coding the the um, mm. low, medium, and high uh, risk to red, amber, and green. Um, so I put um, the letter in the in the um, column as well as the colour, just uh, for people with, who were going to print them out. Um, David, you had one uh, suggested amendment, which I've now forgotten. But. Yes, it was it was um it was to add a comment on the um uh, on on cyber on our on our cyber security and insurance. That's all. I mean, it's, 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 it's additional safeguard. That's all. Kieran, yes. I was looking through these earlier, thinking in the light of recent events, have we got anything on there as an element of risk being? SCDC not having the money to pay us um, the precept. Um, it needs to be on there, doesn't it? As a risk. And I think it may be something that ne never occurred to us as a possible risk. No, we had um, receipt of grant, um, but, mm, but then it says something um, about we don't get yes, grant, exactly so regular grants. Yeah. Apply. So actually getting getting the portion of the. So I think we might need to add that in. So we might. In, in fact, maybe now is a very good time to reassess the whole document in the light of the current crisis, because I think it's very difficult to think about crises until you're actually in the middle of one, and then suddenly it all becomes a lot clearer. Well, okay, shall we take it back to FNGP and um, you can bring a, a new draft version mm. to the FNGP? That raises, though, of course, is how you assess the risk in all of this. Um, whether it's income, disaster, whatever, whatever the, uh, the cause, the, uh, uh, the question is how you quantify it and how you cost it and uh, the import of that. And um, I think you know, there's, there's been a lot of speculation in the, uh, in the Twitter sphere and elsewhere about uh, the potential um, for uh, South Cams to pay uh, what it's due uh, and I'm sorry if inadvertently I rather up the ante last week uh, having just come out of a meeting where um, we were advised that we were going to change the payment schedule um, and I, I didn't know whether I'd actually heard what the suggestion would had, had been um, but we're clearly going to get 25% 25% and 50% uh, um, according to the current schedule so, you know, we're, we're in a better place than many to, uh, for that we've got lots of money in various reserve accounts and various bank accounts, so it's not a, a, an issue for us, um, and it's unlikely to be, be so. Uh, but there's, there's, there are still risks out there, back, back right, that we are exposed to that we wouldn't have otherwise uh, imagined, actually. David. 
Yes, I think there was. Um, I think there was, there was an element in the financial regulations, uh, certainly a few years ago, that we were supposed to hold entire years precept and reserves, and that was some subsequently reduced to six months. So basically, it's a question of you know how, basically, as as as, um, <clears throat> as Brian was suggesting, it's the amount we have in reserves and the uh, whether, whether we're able to cover half or a whole year's payments or not. So I, I, th I think it should be included in the risk register, but uh, not. Not not probably not under red and probably not under amber. Back. I think Kieran was first. That's right. I was just going to say um, what other risk registers do is is um, uh, categorise both the impact and the likelihood in order to um, produce a, a combined um, risk. So you know this would be you know this kind of pandemic is a high impact but low likelihood. Um, sort of risk um, so maybe if we're reviewing them we should um, add in that uh, those two and a, um, a calculated risk um, because that will help us to to do as Brian was suggesting you know catch yeah you've gone muted um, anyway. yeah sorry I'm done okay my, my proposal is that we um, we look at this again before we agree it at full and I don't know whether that cuts to Chase or whether Stephen's got something else to add. Stephen. Um, I was going to point out that obviously the document as it stands at the moment, although it says kind of updated April 2020, picking up the document at the moment, if somebody was to do so or we were to do so as a council, it, do, it is a general risk assessment register. What we are talking about doing here in relation to the current pandemic situation is obviously things that are out of the norm. So therefore, any risk register that we produce at this point in time, which is specifically adjusting its risks according to the circumstances we find ourselves in, would surely need to recognise that either in its title, it would need to say surely that it was a special version or such like. So because clearly the risks that we're adding to it or the assessment of risks are clearly related to the circumstances we find themselves in. What I wouldn't want is us to have a risk register document that suggested that somehow we thought these were standard normal risks. So mm. I just feel that it should have something on it, either in the title or some kind of subtitle or a footnote that makes it clear that this is a kind of almost like a temporary version of our risk register to reflect the circumstances we find ourselves in, which will then be updated when hopefully things return to normal. Any other comments? So um, just to answer that, I don't know what Beck was thinking, but um, I wasn't actually um, specifically thinking of a, of a, um, a risk register that, would, that took into account the current situation, merely reflected that um, something like this um, should have been on um, the risk register, something like, you know, the, um, uh, the district council not being able to pay um, a precept at the right time and that kind of stuff. So anyway, I mean, I think we can spend a lot of time discussing it now unnecessarily if we're going to take it back. So if, if everybody's more or less happy to take it back, that seems a sensible thing to do. Yeah, and we can David? discuss of it later. I was just going to make the general point that, um, that the uh, inability of South Cams to pay is not simply a coronavirus related issue because, uh, for example, if, if South Cams, I'm not suggesting for a moment there's anywhere near that situation, if it were in the situation, say, as Northamptonshire was a couple of, a couple of years ago, where it was uh, simply unable to meet its, that it was capped and it was unable to meet its financial obligations. I mean, that that could also be a conceivable scenario. I'm not saying it's a likely one, but I, I, I think it's not just a coronavirus issue. Yeah. I think that, um, as Beck says, uh, and Kieran's quite happy with it, is, is we take this back and include this in there, because there's obviously a risk element that it, it's you, but also there is the other risk elements regarding South Cairns. Um, and maybe there may be others between now and then that we may come up with. So I'm happy for this. Hello, to... Brian. Brian wanted to say something, Kev. Brian? Yeah, thank you. Um, so, so I just want to, um, if I may, take the focus off South Cams because relatively we're in a really privileged position. We've got lots of money in lots of places. 
what we haven't got is any way of sharing the burden of the lack of business rates, for example, with the county council or the, in a much smaller way, the fire service or uh, the police. I, I don't think we should be discussing this. Mine was a general point rather than a specific point that it's something that we hadn't included in the risk assessment and we really should have. But I don't yes, think- Thank you for interrupting me. I don't thank, think but I hadn't finished. I am, I'm the vice chair and I'm interrupting you because I want to keep yeah. through the matter that's on the agenda. Um, no, and I don't, no, not, I don't think that our payment is a matter that's on the agenda. Um, what I was suggesting was that that kind of thing should be something that's on the agenda. Um, but, but, but it isn't an agenda item to discuss the South Cam's payment. So I don't think we should be discussing that now. We're supposed to be discussing the risk assessment. And so we've agreed. This, this, this is directly related to the risk assessment. And I think I'll defer to the, we've got a chair. Mm. Who's, who's doing his job and, and invited me to speak and you in, interrupted me without putting your hand up. Yes, so can I continue, to the chair? that as vice chair of the meeting, I may occasionally have to interrupt somebody in order to chair it. If Kevin's happy for you to go on, then, then by all means go um, on. Brian's, Brian had his hand up, he, he had a statement to make. So I, I think we should, it's only right that we allow him to have his, to, to voice his statement. So all I wanted to do was make sure that we don't just um, think that SCDC may be a risk, because in fact, in, in terms of the general risk of people not getting paid, the County Council, for example, are at a far greater, greater risk because of their financial situation than, than we are in, internally in South Cairns. So what we've been doing is making sure, and you may have seen, for example, with the payment schedule, we've actually invited all of the parish councils uh, to apply to us if they want the money paying normally, um, because effectively it's a privilege effectively that we're asking for, uh, rather than something we're demanding that the parishes uh, do. Uh, so I just want to put that into context. Okay, Brian, thank you for that. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, forgetting uh, that the, the authority is involved, but it is still potentially a risk of non-payment. Um, so I think we still need to have it, as Beck says, as a risk added in there. Um, and so I'm, I'm happy for us to defer this to, to go back to uh, FMGP and discuss, discuss these issues at that point. Uh, are we all happy with that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. General <coughs> consensus. All happy. Well, I think it was my proposal. If you want to formalise it, you can make it a pro. Uh, proposal. Okay. Correct. Proposed. I second. All those in favour? Okay. Have we got all that? Yes. Thank you. Right. Um, three o three to discuss office IT service contract. Kieran. <laughs> monopolizing the agenda sorry um, yeah, yeah keep going man. <laughs> members will remember that um we've been um we agreed to um look at appointing a, um an it uh, service company and we um uh, uh, fngp proposed us uh, some terms of reference or a, a request for tender um earlier in the year which we um put out to tender we approached um, four different companies. Um, I won't name them, but they were um, of differing sizes. Um, one locally, or a number locally based. Um, some who were uh, a couple that were one-man bands, effectively. You know, one one person um, companies, um, and one that I know um, that, that does work for JHC. For various reasons, we only got one uh, tender back um, from the, the company that um, looks after the IT uh, at JHC and has done for, uh, for a couple of years. Um, the working group that was um, appointed by the uh, um, council to, to discuss this, which is uh, me and Brian, um, Kevin and Jane and the clerks, um, met with this company and reviewed their um, proposal um, and then uh, also um, 
reviewed met again last week to review the actual um, thing that the you know the the costs so um, what we'd like to uh, um, propose now and I'll let me just I can share my screen and give you um, uh, a view of the um, the actual figures um, so we're talking about um, a, a proposal in in um, well the proposal was in three parts um, some one-off costs um, upgrading the PCs, providing some new hardware and the services involved in, in um, uh, doing that and including migrating to um, a, a cloud email um, solution which we'd agreed um, informally as a council that we'd want to do or in principle I should say um, so that we can also have um, councillors having uh, council email addresses. So there's uh, one-off um, costs um, and then we need some new software um, and services which are billed monthly. And then this company was also proposing um, an annual service contract, but the um, working group uh, is recommending that we don't take up the annual service contract, that, that um, we, at least for the initial period, um, we go on a, um, a pay-as-you-go um, uh, basis uh, so that um, yes ad hoc so um, if if the clerk needs um, um, support um, the the initial cost is of because the the um, for ad hoc you get charged um, 30 minutes I think to as assess what the issue is um, and then part of that assessment says well we think it's going to take this many hours to resolve um, so at that point the clerk would either um, be able to authorize it under a uh, normal um, two and a half thousand pound limit or would need to um, to go out to councillors if it was something that, that um, cost more than that. So um, what the, the totals at the moment are um, showing us here that the, the uh, total one-off costs which is the the total of, of these figures here um, the total annual costs which are the total of these figures here but they are, um, there's still quite a lot more to be done um, on them because we need to work out, you know, we need to narrow down the um, precise specification. How many phones do we need? Um, uh, they didn't have a chance to look at the existing laptops and we needed to work out whether we needed, uh, you know, whether those need um, change. There's work to be done about which licenses we might need for um, counselors for email because there are various different options. So um, what I'm suggesting if, is um, to propose a maximum budget of um, three and a half thousand. Well, first of all, to appoint this company um, and then to um, uh, to agree a, uh, a one off uh, payment of up to three and a half thousand and ongoing annual costs of two thousand six hundred. My fellow working group members, is that a fair summary of where we've got to? I would yeah. say so. Kieran, could I just confirm? I thought the original idea was that we wanted um, a ser service plan that, that was all inclusive um, and covered us for everything. Um, and so um, changing to ad hoc as needed would be a change, a change to that. What, what was the reason for making that change? Or is it think up about what we said? I'll, the others will, can um, chip in, but I think that the feeling was. Um, really based on on the kind of the decisions you make as an insurance policy there was a feeling that if we got all of this new stuff um why did we also need to spend um two and a half thousand because the the maintenance cost would be 163 pounds a month why did we need to agree to another two and a half thousand um of annual cost um when we may not need it um and so that was why the the proposal was to to go ad hoc for um six months after all of this work's been done and then review how much we'd used um, support to see whether or not we would be better off going with a, an all-inclusive annual contract. I would agree with that. I think the, the, the thing was that we, we were trying to justify the extra money, wasn't we? And, we? and we really couldn't justify that extra money. I think if I can just chip in as well, me and Claire both said that 
once we've had this upgrade and everything's working fine, we're hoping that any problems we have, we're not going to have, well, obviously as many problems as we're having now. So rather than paying that monthly, it'd be cheap to have ad hoc because we'd like to think that everything will be running smoothly <laughs> by then. I'm just, um, Kieran, could you could you stop sharing your screen now so I can see everybody? I'm my my major concern is that when it comes to IT and IT support, we've continually been penny pinching, and we're wasting huge amounts of staff time by having substandard equipment and by trying to use counsellors as volunteers to do IT support without having a paid professional. And I'm just really wary of you know sort of doing half measures and ending up with a solution that isn't as good. Um, as what I think we need. You know, we are so reliant on IT and now more than ever, we're totally reliant on IT. I just don't think we should be making any compromises, but you know, I'd be, I really want to hear back from the team whether you felt that this is a compromise or whether you're, to you're all totally happy with it. It's not a compromise. It's just a decision about how to pay for support if we need it. So, uh, and Kieran just uh, outlined um, paying for maintenance ahead of the game uh, is like an insurance policy and what we said is a, having done a risk assessment that we'd prefer to, uh, uh, to keep the two and a half thousand quid or so a year uh, in our back pocket uh, and have it there if we need it. The, the level of sophistication of the system that we're talking about is relatively low. What we've failed to do in the past is to have uh, um, a system, for example, where we can even share email. Well, that's going to be resolved. Uh, we're put, chucking quite a lot of upfront money in getting the systems put in a state that they should, as Joe just mentioned, be stable. So, um, and I, I don't see um, that there's any risk. So, for example, if we find that we're calling people out on a night hoc basis, on a frequent basis, uh, then we can adjust our position accordingly. Okay, Kieran? I, sh I should have made clear, just in case it wasn't, that um, by ad hoc, as Brian says, it's just to do with the payment uh, method and whether we um, are um, buying an, uh, an all-inclusive policy or, or paying for the work. We're, we're still agreeing to use this um, company who will have done the work to set us up. It's not that we would be using any other than, than that um, professional company. So, and uh, as I say, we agreed to review it. So the only thing, we, you know, if, I hate to think about scenarios in case they happen, but let's say we do this and after a month, um, the office burns down and we have to get new equipment and restore from backup. Um, you know that could well cost us a thousand pounds in in um uh in consultancy work in order to to do that restore let's say but we still wouldn't have spent um as much as the um uh, the proposed annual cost and we should be covered by insurance in fact if, if you remember we talked about the uh, 10 licenses for av that we've got as well. yeah exactly so there um so there may be elements of that that would already be covered elsewhere Raj, you wanted to say something on their contract, once they've commissioned and set up everything, do they give us a leeway in terms of if anything goes wrong, say within a period of three months, they'll rectify with no cost? I think, it, yes, if anything goes wrong, I think it's it's just um, defining what the, uh, I mean, yeah, clearly, if we buy new stuff um, and it fails, then that would be under warranty for a period of time, that's clear. Um, if something is set up um, in a way that then proves to be um, that, that we need something different um, further down the line, it's a very hard line to, to work out whether that's um, a failure on their part or a failure on our part for, for um, specifying exactly what would need to be done. But uh, I, I know exactly where you're coming from and on, on new stuff then definitely. Um, and But I think um, we would solve any of the um, configuration issues by being perfectly clear up front about exactly what we want and there'll, there'll be a sort of spec that we that then get signed off before they do any work. Steve. Um, although I'm loath to reopen debates on these things when at the end of the day we have delegated powers to committees and we should, by definition, respect as far as possible the discussions that have taken place. Um, 
I'm a little concerned about the fact that on the one hand, we are talking about something that is the absolute kind of skeleton of our ability as a council to function. Yet we are basically debating about the saving of possibly a few hundred pounds. And it strikes me as a false. No, no sorry, that's wrong. We're, no. talking about, we're, we're, we're talking about two and a half thousand pounds a year. Okay, that's an assumption. We're not, I don't believe we are talking about saving two and a half thousand pounds a year. I think that's a false economy. I think that's a false way of presenting it, Brian, if I'm being really clear about it. The assumption is that we will save the 2,600 or 2,500, whatever it was, if we don't need any work to take place. So therefore, the argument that we will save two and a half thousand pounds a year can only be made if we accept that we don't expect anything to go wrong. The moment we say that there is a possibility that something can go wrong, then the argument that we're saving two and a half thousand pounds, I don't think holds up. And I think no, one of the there, worst there, things that all the hours of oh, hold on, let's, let's even finish, Brian. I think one of the worst things that organisations do, and this has been proven over and over and over again in both the public and private sector, is that they look at IT contracts and they look at IT provision for staff and people say, well, I know we need to spend the money on new equipment. Yep, I accept that. We have the one-off upfront costs. And then they look at the service contracts, which would be associated with it, and those organisations bulk at the service contract because they believe that somehow they can avoid spending it. The fact that we have brand new IT equipment and a brand new IT service doesn't for me in any way mean that we are any less likely to have <coughs> IT problems. Mm -hmm. and if we as a parish council, the size that we are, have IT problems and our staff can't do their work, then I think that it is a false economy. That would be my view on the matter, that we are better off spending the money on an IT service contract to ensure that we have the availability rather than seeking to save what is, relatively speaking, in our overall budget, a small amount of money, considering all the things that we spend money on. That would be on. Okay, so as an IT reseller of many years, the maintenance contracts were the uh, cherry on the cake. They were the things that made us the money. And uh, we would price them perfectly reasonably uh, by sticking our finger in the air and saying, that's two and a half grand or that's five grand. It's, it's not new equipment, Stephen. It's, it's a new system using stuff that largely isn't under our uh, ownership. So the, the cloud services that we're talking about subscribing to the whole point of that is that they are run by somebody else with service level agreements of you know several nines, so 99.99% nine, service level agreement, and it's that's that's the thing that will um, shore us up against the potential for claim. And it's not that there will not be any any claims for support, but we've got. A lot of time, which is sorry, I was I was wanting to interject because uh, what is it, eighty quid an hour, Kieran? Um, and so in two and a half grand or two thousand six hundred, there's a lot of eighty quids worth per hour of support, uh, and they're typically not problems that are difficult to solve. Often, if they've so, we bear in mind that we we've got a proposal before us that is you know, a complete proposal about what they are providing for us. And to take up on Ranjin's point, you know, if they don't deliver, it's their responsibility to put it right. If they don't do what they've been asked to do. So uh, I've, I've been there. Beck. Um, James had a hand up as well. I'm still with Stephen. I think we've, we've been down this road too often in the past. I would like to feel that, you know, the clerks could be turning to IT support for support all of the time without having to assess what the cost's going to be, how much of the existing hours they've already used up or any of those other concerns. I think it's a very different matter if you're somebody 
um, like many of us, there are a few of us on the council who have worked in IT support and are used to solving problems and have that experience. And it's not, you know, hugely stressful necessarily to do that. But 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 that's not part of the clerk's job description. And I don't, I'm not happy about how much of their time they've already had to spend trying to sort out technical things. I really want to just get that completely sorted and get that just dealt with by somebody else without them having to worry about that at all. I really think it's time for us to sort ourselves out. Jane? Um, no, I think we should go with the um, ad hoc, particularly for the first six months. We have said we will review it after six months. And if at that point we feel we spent a lot of money and we need to go to the annual or pay monthly, then we should go to it then. But I don't think we should, at least for the first six months. I think it's just money down drain. Colin? If it's all set up and working properly from the start, for the first six months it should be running smoothly at least. With ad hoc, do we get them like on demand or do we have to go to the end of the queue as opposed to having a contract where we have them like on demand? Um, I can answer that. Um, they have said that they will prioritise um, customers with service contracts uh, over ad hoc customers if they needed to make a um, prioritization call. So that's a bit of a, an argument for a contract then. Can I just do um, one more thing um, which is just to show you the exact um, costs because I think um, uh, just for so we know what we're talking about. Um, the um, 12 months of, of, of this would actually be £1,900. Um, so just to be clear what the, what the 12 months would be if, you, if we were to take on a service contract. <coughs> I, uh, I'm, I have to say I'm swaying towards um, Jane and, and Kieran and Brian. Uh, Oh, because I think, as we said, we have we are reviewing it in six months' time. If it does go wrong, um, we can then we can change it at that point. We also did speak to um, Joe and Claire were there, and they were quite happy with the ad hoc system um, for them to work for it to work for them. So I'm happy with the proposal that we've got in front of us for us to to be moving forward with this and and. Um, getting this all set up. Uh, just a point from me and Claire, I don't mind service contract or ad hoc, we just want to be able to get on and, and work without problems that we're having. So obviously it's your decision, but we're happy either way, as long as we can get on and don't have to wait days or whatever, if something goes wrong. Um. And bear in mind that, as Kieran said, I think the important thing is that the people who are supplying the system are the people that are going to do the support. So, you know, it's 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 an all-in-one package. Mm. Could I, um, just so we don't get ourselves tied in, in um, proposal lots, um, could we separate this out? Um, so first of all, um, could I propose that we um, spend up to um, 3,500 on one-off costs and 2,600 in, in annual software uh, and system costs um, and then we can agree that and then have a separate vote about the um, um, way What's we manage enough? the service. Thanks, okay if, if, you, if you're proposing that Kieran I'll second that. I think Brian just did but. <laughs> did he? I'll cool. find Brian a second I'm happy. Yeah. Um, all those in favour? Unanimous. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, I just say Tony Orgy no. has arrived. So oh, sorry. Hello, Tony. Hi there. Hi, Tony. Hi. Um, so I know we should. Um, well, let, let's do this um, uh, the, the first way then. So I'll I'll then propose that we um, have an an ad hoc um, agreement with this um, IT company. Um, to be reviewed by the working party and thus by the, the um, full council um, after six months. I'll second that. Oh, hold on. Yeah. But obviously oh. if, if this proposal falls, then um, someone else can propose that we take up a service contract. 
All those in favour of that proposal? Keep your hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those against? Uh, one, two. Abstains, abstentions? One, two. Right, Seven. I haven't got someone. There's Rajni, sorry, were you? I was four. Right, sorry, people, can we just do, do four? All those again? four, can you put your hands up again, please? One, two, three. One, two, four, five, Seven. Six. Yep. Those again. against? Against? One. And Colin. One abstention. And abstain and those abstaining. Ah, oh, two. Sorry, yeah. Two abstaining. Hello. Two okay. Again. So carried forward. Blake voted against the motion. Thank you. But it's carried forward, so we go with that and review in six months with the working group. Okay. Thank you. And if you're happy, um, I'll carry on as the main liaison with the. Um, in fact, uh, can we now say who it is who you've appointed? Is that um, uh, okay? Yeah. The the company is called Grace Solutions. Um, they're based um, in Cambridge in the on the um, Orchard Park. Um, as I say, they've worked with um, uh, JHC um, since we moved um, offices um, nearly three years ago now. Um, but they also um, have a variety of uh, non-profit and um, large businesses, and um, including the Orchard Park. Um, as community centre and, and the council offices or the community association, whatever their official status is. So um, uh, they have um, experience in, in our um, sector. So thank you all. Thank you very much, Kieran. And thank you for doing all the work and finding all the information out. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> all right, um, 304, do you agree? The source and fund run date Sunday, the 4th of October. This is obviously being changed due to the coronavirus, and they've had to cancel the, the normal uh, date in May. Are we all happy for this to go ahead on the 4th of October? Can I take that as a general consensus? Yeah, everybody? Excellent. Um, 3.05 to discuss cancelling the annual public meeting. Comments, please. That should probably say postpone, not cancel. Uh, postpone the annual. We have to have it. Stephen has his hand up, Kevin. Stephen? Sorry, Kevin, I wasn't sure if you um, For the benefit of the fact that obviously it's now being recorded and we had a slight area of confusion amongst ourselves as parish councillors about exactly what we meant by this, could we just have it recorded on the video and then in the minutes as to exactly what we mean by this? Because since we weren't entirely sure, I'm sure others will be in the same position. So this is the annual parish meeting, the public one, not our annual full meeting, which we have the second Tuesday of May. This okay. is one the first. I think I've been at quite a few other councils. Um, I've been speaking to a, um, parish councils are um, postponing them until September, hoping, obviously. Thank you, Joe. Sorry, it's probably for my own benefit and everyone else will be You're fine awesome. with it. But, you know, I like, <laughs> I, like, I like to pretend that I'm asking. It's like when you say I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> to ask a question. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking for a friend. The friend yeah. is me. Thanks. Well, Do I have any other uh, any other comments uh, on on uh, postponing the annual public meeting, public. not the annual parish? Sorry, meeting. public meeting. Yeah, sorry. The, the public and the parish meeting are the same, aren't they? No, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> as long as it's got so, the word public in, we know which one it is. Yeah, it is. The yeah. distinction the distinction is the annual parish council meeting, which is the one in which we elect the chairs, chairman, yeah. and vice chairman. And the annual parish meeting, which is the public meeting. <laughs> well, they're both public like meetings, yeah. actually. No, it's, the meeting. Meeting of it, yes. it's the meeting of the parish at which the parish council reports Ooh. to the village. Well, when do we want to do it? And in that, in that respect, I think we ought to think about the possibility of having it and doing it online. 
Uh, I'm, uh, I, I have to say, personally, I'm not in favour of that because we can get a lot of public there and it may just just be a bit too big uh, for us to control by this method. Um, um, so I would be, uh, personally, this is just my opinion, everyone's got their own opinion, I would prefer if we defer or, or postpone until September time um, to have that meeting. And you cut David. Yeah. Uh, yes, I support Kevin on that, but for a slightly different reason. That is that um, it is a meeting for the whole village and uh, not everybody has access to this technology or, this co or, 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 or feel confident in using Zoom. And therefore, I think you create a situation where you'll you, 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 you potentially discriminate against those who don't have that access. Of course, if I, if I might respond to that, David, the, the fact is that you can phone in. You can, phone in like a teleconference you don't have to use the, the yes, IT yeah, yeah. technology yes I'm aware of that but, 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 uh, but um, I, I think there are people who would not even be comfortable with using that I think it's yeah. uh, uh, I mean it, it's you know for, for, perhaps you, you know for yourself and possibly for myself we are, you know we're fairly used to these systems but others are not I, I think one has to be aware of that Stephen no, I'm, I'm going to mute because I can't quite decide what I think. I'm convinced by both of them, so I'm just going to mute. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you actually might... Kevin's got his hand up. Might, yeah, well, oh, sorry, just, can no. I just say, you might get a different um, uh, visitor to the meeting if you did it online. You might get a more diverse mix. Yeah. Questionable. Um, I'd like to make a formal proposal that we um, postpone it to Tuesday, the twenty-second of September. I would support. I would second that. Can we go to the vote then? Uh, does anyone else want to make a comment before I make a, go to the vote? No. All, right, all those in favour of postponing till twenty-second of September, please raise your hands. Got that. Against. Oh, uh, against? So, uh, but I'm with Stephen on this. <laughs> I'm staying with not that bothered. <laughs> Abstentions. Lovely, thank you. Okay. Nine, 10, 11, that's over with you. Um, to discuss the co-op notice board. Um, Beck did raise this, uh, I think, a couple of meetings back now. Um, there was some, from what I can gather, there's some sort of slight confusion in this, in, in who actually owns it and who maintains it. Um, okay, Jo. I was going to find out. Um, yeah, so it was donated by Budgeons in January 2011, and it was kind of agreed to Parish Council and Budgeons to be key holders, but they did actually purchase it. But they donated it to the parish council. No, to the community. They to donated the community. it because it's a community notice board. Oh right, that's what that's the one I wanted to declare it. That's fine. Yeah, comments, please. Sorry, donated it to the community. It said in the minutes as a community board. I'm not sure the community exists as a legal entity. Yeah. Right. I don't know, Beth, did you want to bring up, because I think you mentioned it, didn't you, the condition of the board? Yes, um, it's got um, it's just got very weather-beaten, I think, to the extent that the, um, the plastic over it has got very opaque. Um, I think a couple of us have cleaned it um, over the years. It also gets very dirty. Um, and so me and um, actually another person on the Source and Scene team have occasionally cleaned it. Um, she's um, She's got an Allen key, which I gave her, and so she updates the posters. I think what we found is the original plan was that budgeons were going to keep it up to date. So they were going to basically be in control of what went on there. But they quickly found that this was too much of a task for any of their staff to be in charge of. Um, and so they weren't really doing it, or they were doing it sort of once a week, which made people very frustrated, because when you want to put a poster for your event up, you generally want to put it up that day, especially if it's only a week before the event, which it may often be. Um, when we last discussed the notice board, um, there were several of us on the council 
Um, principal among them, as far as I can remember, me and Tony Fell, who felt very strongly that if it's meant to be a village notice board and a public notice board, then it shouldn't be locked with a key that only a couple of people have. And we argued strongly for a notice board that was publicly accessible. Um, we have examples in the village of two other two two fences that are basically used as notice boards: the fence outside number ninety five High Street and the fence outside number fifty four. And those are basically self policing. So people take down notices that are out of date. Um, as the homeowner here, I take down notices which break um, the regulations for notices, which. Um, are included in a 60 page booklet published by South Ham's District Council, I think, which I have read in its entirety. Um, so I, I would like to suggest that we replace the notice board because it's very, very tatty, but I'd really like to see us replace it with something that's a better system. So basically a notice board that's accessible to everybody rather than the current system, which relies on one volunteer of goodwill to update the notices. Um, and I, I think we can disregard the idea of relying on anybody in co-op to be updating the notice board because it's just not something that they can they can spare staff time to do. Um, I I think it would also probably be useful to have something a bit bigger, um, but I think you know we'll need to do some research into that um, to see what's a, a available. Stephen, I wish to give my support to everything that Beck has just said. Thank you, Stephen. Any other comments? Are you proposing that, Beck? And I, I think, yeah, uh, proposing that uh, as in principle, a, a, a bigger publicly accessible notice board, and then we'll have to look into the practicalities of what we can actually get. Or we might be able to get um, somebody to make something, um, but it does need to be weatherproof. So I'm not sure what the solutions are. I've sort of looked around other parishes, um, but nobody's got anything very big, um, but we can certainly do some, do some research. So who, if we did agree this, who Kieran. would have the keys? Sorry, Kieran. Oh, no, um, answer your question, um, Kev, whilst we're on that one. Uh, oh, no uh, keys, it'd be open. What, be what, what I've perfect. just been saying, no, what Stephen just agreed with, was that the whole point of the notice board should be that it's publicly accessible, so it wouldn't have keys, it wouldn't be locked. Anyone okay. would be able to put a notice up, the same as they uh, can yeah. on the fences in the village. Can I say something to that? I think, uh, um, Kieran, have you got anything to say? Um, yeah, I was just going to say, um, I'm not sure we need to, to vote on it because if, if we're going to wait to get quotes, yeah. um, then, you know, let's, the, we can, well, the decision will be at that point, but we should also just um, ask the, uh, the owner of that wall, if that's the wall where it's going to go um, for permission, so that if we did buy something, we'd have their permission to do it. And the okay. group's larger. And also, the, um, of course, the potential for um, vandalism, for mm. rather an exaggerated word for perhaps uh, mucking about with people's stuff in there. One of the advantages of this at the minute is the, uh, the fact that it's relatively secure and people can't move other people's stuff, which is probably a bigger risk than some sort of notional vandalism. Um, just, uh, but uh, I think we need to see a proposal and, and uh, have, have it costed. Well, so my, my proposal in principle is that we get something bigger and publicly accessible. Um, people taking down posters doesn't seem to be a problem on the other two notice the, in, in the other areas of the village. I think the only thing we have is we have a lady who always takes down the circus posters, but then it's very difficult to prevent her from doing that. Um, yeah, but the problem does, there, Beck, is that y your fence can basically cope with as many posters as, as it likes, and Marilyn's is a similar size. So it's so in, in, the, uh, in the one on the, the co-op's wall, uh, clearly there's a limited amount of availability. Yeah, so it will, it will need to be bigger and we'll need to think about that. Um, yes. Tony, Tony, Audrey. Um, Tony, Yeah, could I just say something? Uh, Bex mentioned two walls. There is another wall in Sawston which has a lot of posters, and that's actually just opposite where we're talking about in Salters and Waste. Actually, 
walk into the car park and when you look at the number of notices down there we all need something fairly big to accommodate the number of notices that do appear hmm. sorry tony you disappeared your your voice disappeared for a while Tony's saying there are lots of posters on the fence opposite the notice board that we're talking about um, yes, at, at different times, that's the fence that's owned by the Cambridge Building Society because it borders their car park. At different times, they've decided they didn't want anybody to put posters on that fence and have written them all down again. So I don't know what the current status is. But yeah, I, I do think it, it needs to be big. Um, yeah. Can I, so can I, can I ask, does anybody have a good contact at the co-op? Because when I've had dealings with co-op, they seem to be immensely bureaucratic. Um, and it would be nice to know if there's somebody we can actually talk to about that area and have a proper conversation with, because otherwise I could easily find myself being um, passed around email chains for up to 10 months, as happened last time I tried to have a conversation with them. Does anyone, um, does anyone know? Jo, have you had any um, Yeah, possibly. <laughs> I'll have an email you tomorrow, because obviously this is something we're going to need to look into now anyway, and... So I think we've got an idea of what we need. Um, and yeah, I'll, we'll, we can speak during the week, Beck, and we can see what we can try and get together. And then when we've got some information, we'll take it to full or to planning. Good, good. Well, shall I, can I just propose then as a general thing to get agreement on that what we'd like is a, a publicly accessible notice board that's, uh, if, if we can get the agreement of the co-op is bigger than what we've got from <coughs> seven novels fighting for space. Um, would anyone like to second that and then vote on it? No, we can't, we can't do that, Beck. We, it, the proposal has to come forward with a budget associated with it, which is what we're agreeing to do. I'm not sure it does, and I can't get a budget unless I know what kind of notice board I'm getting, which is why I'm suggesting... Yes, yeah, so we're going to get some costs for it. No, I think we can agree something in principle before I come back with specific costs. I don't want to go and investigate specific costs and then come back and have another argument with lots of people saying, oh, no, it has to be one that we can lock. So I don't want to waste my time. So this is just to agree general principles about it. So can you remember off the top of your head how much the one we put oh. up on um, Phil Boswell's wall uh, was? Uh, no, no, I don't. But that that's quite different because that's lockable and yeah I mean, that, I was... do you just want to give me a show of hands in as a general principle well it, it, it combines like this we need to agree a, a budget uh, uh, of, no, of what... no, I, don't. I think i think no we don't i think what beck's point is are you all happy with having an extra a larger external notice board that's weatherproof that people can access because there's no point us going and getting costs for it and then we bring it to a meeting and then you'll go, oh no, I think we should have a lockable one. So we, I think if you can just agree whether you want a lockable one or an open one, just say so we're not wasting our time going, because obviously we've got to get quotes, so we've got to contact different companies. So as long as we know what you want, if you can agree on that, then we can go away and get some costing. Okay, okay, Colin. You're uh, muted, Colin. I, I'm unmuted. Don't we really need to have a word with the co-op first and find out what they're well, on? We, we do that as well. Uh, we, yeah. But it's useful if we can agree here so we know what we're going to talk to them about. Okay. So, so well, Beck, Beck's has proposed it. Stephen's um, seconded it. So let's take this to the vote. If you're all in favour, in principle, of going ahead with this, please raise your hands. I keep them up. One, two, three, four, nine. Those against? Two. Thank you. Any other, no abstentions? Right. Um, 307 to discuss project manager for S106 projects, Mill Lane um, architect, and potentially other. Um, uh, buildings as well. Um, I brought this to the council um, last month, I think, or whenever, and it was fed generally felt that um, the council uh, was basically in agreement that we should go out and get uh, put tenders out to find more people. So, Joe, have you got an update of, of any no, other? No, afraid, afraid not. If if people have got or can give me contacts of who, who to ask about this and get quotes, then 
be grateful. Have we put together a spec of what we want? Well, we, we had a, um, I'd spoken to other parish councils who have used an architect that's also a project manager and um, we contacted him and he's given a spec. But um, yeah, you now I'm going to need to get more, but I don't, I don't know who to contact to be honest. So. The, the one of the bit, the spec for Mill Lane help. would be Cam's FA, which I thought we spoke to. Well, no. we did. We spoke to Cam, well, we spoke to Cam's FA to ask to get them to tell us what we needed for Mill Lane and Linton Way, and then um, we need we needed someone to like try and get someone to project manage it to do the funding and stuff, and to and, and obviously it's an architect to tell it, to help us with plans etc but all right, we had his kind of quote through but i need to get two more but i i don't know who but does anyone else know anyone else who could potentially uh, without saying names if they can just email me but i do need help with this one because i don't I'm kind of at a loss with it i could think of one um which i'll email over Kieran, sorry I was just going to say, I think the problem with getting comparable quotes is, uh, as Beck said, we, we really need a document that says what we want from somebody. I mean, if that can be somebody's proposal, existing proposal, and then we send that round minus the cost to everybody else, then that's one way of doing it. But it would be better to to use that to, to look at and say, well, actually, what do we want? It may not need to be, you know, super um, detailed, um, but just something so that we can get um apples and apples comparisons and i think that was the problem was we wasn't we don't we didn't we don't know what we want Can't, well we know okay. we want to extend mill like we roughly but um okay. we haven't got a, a document as such which i thought we had discussed a few things at the meeting joe we were basically thinking of, uh, of all the things that we actually needed somebody to do in the process of deciding that we needed to employ a person to do it do you think we could go back to the um back to the minutes and put something together to recreation i don't think it's I... that easy but yeah, we're... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm it's, it's all right saying just put it together and then go and get quotes it's yeah it's not it's, it's, it's not that easy that i have to meet them we have to go around but which is fine but i just need a bit more guidance of what you all want it's not my decision it's not down to me is it? right can oh. i propose then before we go forward with this if we can ourselves come up with a very basic spec that we would be needing we would be needing uh, by email and then um we could feed that information into joe and discuss at the next meeting potentially are we happy with that what i was going to say and to just chip in is um there's an alternative way of doing this which is what you might do if you were doing um um say a graphic design contract or whatever which is would be a um a credentials pitch so you know you you interview people um and and ask them to to um explain the approach that they would take um you know but both to finding out what what it is that you want to do and then to quoting um we could perhaps go on that basis it does it's not a um a firm quote but you would then whether that's recreation or a different working party would could interview those people or the the full council could interview those people um and then we could decide well this this person seems to be saying the right things that we um agree with we can and then they can make a proposal about well um you need to spend x for me to work up a, a full proposal or something like that well that's a scoping project isn't it yeah exactly so that but but you you're aiming the um understanding is that you're going to be appointing someone who's going to do the whole project for you um but the initial thing that you get them to quote for is is the initial bit of work that then tells you how much they're going to charge for the rest of it um so that you're not committing yourself um but that you you kind of decide the person that you out of the you interview people and, and work out who you might want to um, work with out of those people you interview and, and one of the issues that we've got is that um, I'm, I'm presuming, assuming that the um, new pavilion at the um, Cambridge uh, United ground is going to be more sophisticated than what we've got because it's going to cope with football and cricket because we're going to have a pitch for each. 
Not necessarily, because I think the, the one that spices is is pretty high spec. I'm not so sure the one at Cambridge will be as high a spec as spices. There you go. So, but that's that's a conversation we need to have, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, so, who? Uh, the, I mean, the ideal situation would be for recreation to uh, to interview these people. We can bring them to a recreation meeting. Um, so if we can um, put some names about for, that we could ask, uh, um, as Kieran's just said, and then bring it to recreation, would that be a fair um, way of going around it? Mm -hmm. Okay, Stephen. Stephen. Um, yes, as long as, I suppose we'd have to be clear with anyone who we invited to that committee. I mean, we could hold a meeting of that committee even in the next month or two months or whatever. There's no reason why that can't be done. I think we'd have to be clear with those people that this was like sort of a an early stage of, I think Brian referred to it as like a scoping project, whereby we're not at this immediate stage saying we know exactly what we want and to some extent we're offering them the opportunity to inform our decision making process before actually coming up with exactly what the contract is that we're wanting to set because at the meeting we had i forget exactly whichever meeting it was we talked about the possibility of somebody then being involved with all of those s106 projects and then possibly looking to create capacity for us to expand as a parish council what we were able to provide for the village so it was quite a large idea that mm -hmm. i think i and others proposed so i'm just saying it'd be important that whoever we then invited to come to that meeting understood that they weren't at that point pitching for something specific they were in a sense helping us develop what would then become a specific task even that that is what Kieran suggested. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm, just, I'm just a bit worried that we're going round and round now, and I'm also worried yeah. about running out of time because we've got a lot of stuff to get through okay. uh, with start salaries. Um, so uh, are we? So basically, I don't think we need to take a vote on this, do we, Joe? Uh, just that way, if you forward some names and then we bring it to recreation. Okay. Thank right. You. To clear away to discuss eco green funding. Um, again, this was brought up at one uh, previous meeting. Um, the idea was for people to go away and think of um, ideas for um, putting a, uh, an application for the eco green funding that South Cairns District Council are doing. Um, my suggestion was um, charging thing, uh, charging for electric cars. Mm -hmm. Brian came up with something about the water pump, did you, Brian? Brian? You're mute. Sorry, I'll, I'll just well, I turned myself off. Then. Back on. Um, yeah, sorry, so Kevin. Just, on. I thought I'd let the phone, phone ringing out <laughs> subside. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, it was just simply um, f fitting uh, water refilling capabilities to the, to the water pumps. Paul, I'm sorry, I'm oh, on a Zoom meeting. It's all right, I've, mute, I've muted him, don't worry. Okay. Go on, Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. done, that was, that was all. Just you... being able to fill, refill uh, people's uh, water, water carriers from, uh, from the pumps. So I, are you suggesting... Are you suggesting making some of our non-functional water pumps functional? Because the one, yes. the one out on the high street, yes, doesn't pump water, but the one in Pampersford does pump water, and that's much too. The one in Pampersford pumps water, and um, there's no particular reason I understand that ours couldn't be re-serviced. Uh, well, that would be really fun. I mean, it's actually the one just outside here, next to the bus stop, is right next to um, a water main. So that would be great. And there's the one um, in the high street opposite, more or less I'm opposite I'm the court. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, my space bar <laughs> is not doing what it's supposed to. David. Yes, I just point out that uh, when those were put in uh, uh, under initiative from uh, an earlier chairman, they, they were um, uh, 
they're, they're, they're purely ornamental. They, they're, they're not the size of historic pumps. They don't connect to anything. Or So in order to get them working, basically, you would either have to connect them to the mains, as Beck has implied, or else you would have to drill another borehole under each one. So you would need an additional extraction license. And Well, anyway, I just, I just point that out. Just point that out. pipe seems like a more um, suitable idea. With a meter. <laughs> um, any other comments? Neil? Can you You're on mute, um, Neil. Sorry. Neil, on, you're Neil. muted. You're on mute. Oh, okay. Neil, you're still muted. You're muted. You're still muted. Is that it? Uh, Joe, uh, if you did try and get them going and working, you'd have a neat Legionella risk assessment to do on them, like you do with fire, ex um, fire extinguisher hoses. You'd have to have them tested and things like that. And you'd have to have a, um, it would have to be documented. Joe. Sorry, I was just going to say, we're going into detail about this, but we, what, a way forward to move it. We've asked for people to give ideas, and then do we need to? We need to. I don't know. Where do we move forward with these ideas? Well, so far we've only got two ideas, discussed... and I don't think we're going to. We're, doesn't look like um, they're the two main ones that are coming up. Um, the feeling that I'm getting is the water pumps being made serviceable are it, the more favourable out of the two ideas. Um, are we only allowed one thing? Oh, I, I, sorry. I, I, actually, as Neil just said, it might be practically very difficult to do that if there's no uh, no connection, if they're uh, ornamental only. So actually, a um, you might find there are some people on the council that are very favourable to putting electric charging points in the car park that is actually South Cam's property. Very absolutely aligned with green to the core. Kevin. So, uh, can I ask two questions? Um, one, uh, do we, as a parish, can we only make one application? Um, and two, how detailed does that application have to be? Uh, I, I'm not sure that there's any limits, but I don't think that they would expect to get more than one from any parish council, certainly in a year. <coughs> And how detailed, um, you know, would oh, it have I think to be written up the, and costed? I think you'd have to do a proper, pro properly costed exercise, uh, include, including on, ongoing costs. So there's a whole question about where the electricity comes from uh, for a charging point. Um, so would, would the project actually fund the ongoing costs, uh, for example? David? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I would certainly support the charging point project. I have doubts about the pump one. In fact, I would argue whether that is actually, in fact, an eco project at all, given the, uh, given the extreme stress that the water table is under in this area. Uh, would you want to increase the number of extraction points, either from the main system or, from the, or, or directly from the aquifer? And I, I would question whether that, actually, whether, whether, that is actually, whether that is actually a particularly sustainable mm -hmm. project. The refilling of uh, water bottles is uh, more about plastic uh, okay. non-use okay. than yeah. water. Yeah. All right, so can um, can we get so because the time is getting on, we've got a lot of stuff to get through. Can we um, agree that we find out from the South Cairns exactly what information they need and progress with the charging points? Are we happy with that? Yeah. We can I have a, we do it properly a proposer and seconder. Can I have our proposal yeah. we we'll go for the charging points? Do I have a seconder? Yeah. Maybe. David, all those in favour? Yep. Yeah. Uh ten. All those against? Thank you. Is that everybody? Yeah. Right. Um three oh nine to discuss street light requests from Pampersford. Joe, oh, you did send the information around earlier. Yeah, so basically, um, Pampersford, obviously we've just gone through 
our one we agreed to use the company for a year um Pampersford have asked if we will take on their four street lights the energy street costs and then they'll pay us and um, i have mm -hmm. actually been in contact with them trying to get a cost in for it we had to send all the details through today which i'd only just got from Pampersford, so i haven't had a response yet so i don't know how much it is going to be but right. if we agree we're happy to add theirs on if they're paying us for it anyway Kieran. I propose cutting to the chase and um, proposing that we agree. Okay, do I have a seconder? Second. Stephen. All those in favour? Yep, thank you. 11? Yep. Excellent. Thanks, Kevin. Um, to discuss requests from resident who hires the pavilion to pay invoice later on in the year. So what? Uh, uh, where's Claire gone? Oh, you're there. Kieran. Uh, well, I was just going to say that we should, uh, I wonder whether we should make a more general um, ruling um, here, um, because I think, that, you know, we could find other people um, uh, who owe us money, um, who who are going to ask for, for um, forbearance in, in um, payment terms. Um, and I wonder whether we could make some kind of general ruling that, um, I don't know, it deputes the clerk or to the or to the um, uh, chair and vice chair or, or something like that to save every request having to come back and being individually assessed here. Can we uh, take yeah. a, a, a general policy decision about whether we want to give people holidays for, for time that they're not able to use the um, um, pavilions or grounds as they would expect? Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm sort of like in favour of that. At the moment, the general consensus is about a three-month holiday because um, we don't know where we're going to be um, at all with this. So I would propose a three-month holiday for this period from the start of their season, that would be, not from to date. It would be from the start of... Because uh, you've obviously got sports clubs and everything else that's involved in this. Uh, can I... Sorry, can I just butt in there? That most of the football clubs have actually paid up. That's fine. Um, this is uh, groups that are using pavilions etc but you can't do a season because they get charged quarterly so they've been charged January, February, March that's what obviously they're struggling to pay with but then I guess they're not using it now till to, to they start using it again but um, there's not really a season for these other groups Sorry, can I, can I ask a Point of information, just th so this particular request is for period January to March. Yeah. Rather now, Claire, than sorry, I'm right. right in that. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's their first quarter. So they've they've been invoiced for January, February, March, which so they 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 have actually used it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that they, for me, that's a different situation. It is for me as well. Stephen. Um. Right. It's kind of changed halfway in the middle, I think. Um, I was going to say that I wanted to absolutely agree with Kevin's point about definitely offering at least a three-month holiday for people. Well, fundamentally, it's going to be our role, surely, as the parish council to ensure that at the end of this, that village groups, whatever they are, are able to continue to exist. And potentially, we may end up being the ones who have to take the hit Mm. It's clear the money has to come from somewhere and be it, I don't know, a WI, a church where they'd have their church. But you know what I mean? Whatever group it would be, youth, old or whatever, clearly we should not in any way be doing anything that potentially puts any of those groups at risk. Now, obviously, Joe's raised the point that the football clubs have paid up front. OK, but maybe we ought to be sending out the message to anybody who uses, well, the sports videos and all the sports fields that it, we are amenable to any we are amenable to considering any request in that regard but that obviously but coming back to the group who have already used the pavilion um i would assume that we are talking about a group who rent it use it and are reliant upon their members turning up to sessions and paying for the sessions yes that be a reasonable um, thing? so yeah they charge for the sessions yeah. um and okay, so again, that is, uh, I would, to some extent, even though it, may, even though some of these things may well be a kind of 
slightly sort of commercial enterprise to some extent, surely we should be using our offices of the parish council to ensure that at the end of this process, be that July, August, September, whatever, that all these facilities still exist for the village. So in principle, going back to, I know whether it was Kieran or someone else, who said that we should almost be kind of saying, in general, this is our stance on it, where there are specifics that may not fit what we say, that is something that the clerk with the chair and the vice chair consider and make a decision on. Thank you, Johnny. Jane, Any other Jane comments? Is waiting to speak. Who? Jane. 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 You say you've invoiced them for January, February, March, but we were already shut down in March, part of March. So if we invoiced them for a period... It might not have been the whole of March, but I mean, we, we, the one off you is that it's in the agreement, they all get charged quarterly. But is it possible some of them have been charged for a period where they couldn't actually use it anyway? Oh, no, because Claire always checks with them and we do, we do always just charge them for what they use. Okay, that's all. I don't know, Claire, if you've got anything to add to... So, so if I can just clarify, I think there's, there's two different issues, aren't there? Mm. So we, we've got people who have paid for stuff um, that haven't actually been able to use. So the football clubs which would still be in season but aren't able to use the, the pitches mm -hmm. now. There's a, a second category, which is the one before us, which is people who are in financial difficulty because they've got no ongoing revenue, so they can't pay us for stuff they've already effectively used. And then there's the people that are coming forward. So the cricket clubs, for example, which whose season should have started, what, two, three weeks ago, um, and haven't been able to do so. And have, have they been billed? And are we expecting payment? So no, I haven't billed them. And probably, they probably won't pay. But with the football, the way that their agreement works is they pay for the matches that they play. So they get an invoice, which is on what the predicted matches are. So they will have. So then at the end of March, if there was games that were cancelled, then they don't pay for what they haven't had. So even though, yes, they have paid at the moment, which is great. I haven't had any problems. The, the checks have just come straight in, I think, for all of them. I don't know if they're going to end up coming back to us saying, well, is that going to roll over to September and come off of that invoice? We haven't had that discussion. They haven't asked me yet. And I think that's what we should be prepared for, isn't it? Well, that's yeah. how it normally sort of works. So I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. So the, the issue is that I'm having with the one that for uh, January, February, March is they would have, the facility would have been used January and February, probably not March. So I'm sort of thinking, do we just invoice them for January and February and not March? I'm wondering if they're just maybe in a situation, I don't know, but I'm just saying that are they being cautious? Are they in a position where they have maybe trying to keep that money because they don't know when they're going to be going back to work. So it might be all okay in another couple of weeks for them and they'll be able to pay it. Um, obviously, if it's not paid, then they won't be going back doing it until they've paid, if that makes sense. That's how maybe I've sort of took it. Yeah, yeah so the, the request is for extended payment terms rather than for um, uh, any kind of um, discount or refund yeah. is my understanding so um, I, w I mean I was hoping we could make uh, see if we could do it in a, in a general way but it sounds as though the general is, is there, there's too many different um, things on the go so so perhaps here I, I propose that we um, give them extended payment terms whatever they need let's say 60 days 90 days um, but then we also have a separate um, um, conversation, or, you know, maybe um, getting people together to review the, the situation with the sports clubs um, and coming up with a proposal for, for what we do for the future, for people who've already paid us like the football, for people who should have paid us like the cricket and all of that kind of stuff. And, we, and then we kind of um, can cost that out a bit. I think okay, I'd like to... bye. 
I'd like to support Stephen's view that we shouldn't be charging any, anybody anything for things that they can't use because we'll end up bankrupting clubs and we don't want to do that. I, 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 I'd like us to be as generous as possible. So I think we should be reimbursing people who have paid rents for, for grounds that they can't use and we shouldn't be charging anybody for anything if they can't do anything with it. I think that's a general consensus of us all, isn't it? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Right. Well, shall I make that a proper proposal and then? So, sorry, just to unclick, so, you're, so, um, so even though they have used it? No, if, if people have actually, I think people should pay we're for... Not, we're not charging people. people. I mean, football and cricket are different because the way they're invoiced, but the, these, these groups that are using them, they only get charged after they've used them. So in April, they'll be invoiced for January, February, March, and then, so they have used what they're being invoiced for. And there's, like I say, Claire always checks with them if there's any days that they haven't used them and we wouldn't charge them. So I think there's a, there's a, I think there's a, a, a guidance that we can give, isn't there, um, on, on this. So um, we, we want to be relatively generous. We want to be, give people the best chance of survivability. And therefore, uh, the request before us is an example of others we might get who want holiday payments. And so we are saying, I think, that we are agreed to give people holiday payments. Uh, but one of the things that we might suggest is that if they have a situation where they want to resume activity but still owe us money, what do we do under those circumstances? Um, so uh, if you know September comes around and they want to redo their exercise class or whatever it is, but they're still owing us money, are we going to be generous then as well and give them longer time to pay than we normally would allow? I think we've got no choice on that, Brian. We, we've got to show that we you know that we to encourage um, we would have to support them in any way we can financially. Yeah, and there's no be careful doubt. not to give an open ended normal by September. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it can't be open end. Uh, I, I agree, it can't be open ended. But what we could possibly do is um, possibly um, add a, a, a small percentage on top of the payment that they're paying to to reimburse. Same way take, they want to take, they... take it effectively in installments or something of that, yeah. of that nature, just to give them a helping hand to, to reactivate whatever it was they were doing. Yeah, I'm, I would be happy with that. Have you got that, Joe? So no, sorry. So taking an installments, so, so spread so, that payment. Yeah, I, th I think what we're suggesting is, clear, well, first sorry. of all, we're only invoicing them for what they've already used in January yeah. and February. That, that's yeah. right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, we're offering um, to uh, negotiate whatever payment terms they need in order to um, pay that invoice. Yeah. That sums it up. Yeah. Well, shall I propose that then? Propose well, it. Yeah. I'll second that. Right, hold All on those in favour? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not looking. Um, Kevin. Right, sorry, yep, yeah, hands up. All those in favour? Right, it's nine. Those against? <laughs> Abstentions? Oh dear. Claire, what did you get? It was 10-4 and 1 against. 10 and 1. Okay. And then do you, and then, sorry, and then we'll um, discuss at uh, recreation, we need to discuss obviously sports clubs. We'll put that on the agenda. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. thank you. All right, uh, Colin, update on speed camera. Well, the battery ran out uh, probably last Thursday. Uh, Probably not an essential journey that I go out there and change it. Ah, um, uh, yes. Has there been any, has there been any traffic? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Um, if I just share... Hang on. Uh, where is... Uh, it's that one. Right. You can see there... Uh, you've got London Road, Baverham Road, and Cambridge Road. These are statistics going up until you're I think. Not, you're not sharing uh, your got anything, documents. Well, that's up to the 1st of March. Uh, we can see there 
We're basically getting the same amount of traffic. Colin, you can't see Colin, anything. you're not sharing. Nobody can just... see anything. <laughs> Am I not? Well, uh, sorry, I was just going to ask whether, um, given the time yeah. and what else we've got on the agenda, might it be okay. possible for Colin to share a, um, a summary um, by email? Um, email. And then we can I'll, I'll feedback be happy with, with the other questions. If you put no. it on email, then I'll put it on the website so we've got a speed camera bit so that every the public can see it as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right, that's brilliant. Um, update from County Council. Well, there's nothing coming, I'm assuming, from Roger, Claire. Otherwise, you've been emailed out. So, Brian, update from District Council. You've muted again, Brian. I'll just give you a, um, a, a very brief overview because I'm conscious of time too. Um, we have been working really quite hard as a group to try and make sure that uh, those residents uh, on the vulnerable lists of various sorts are being looked after. Um, and we've, um, uh, we've been doing quite a lot of work, 200 or so uh, people that uh, we hadn't heard from have been contacted over the last three weeks uh, to ensure that they've got the support they need. Um, we've got all manner of uh, work going on. Joe's been in contact with our patch managers. Um, so uh, in the, there's a line of uh, communication uh, between them and uh, the parish and then from Joe and Claire onwards, outwards, um, is reasonably well established now. Um, uh, but there's more work to do. There are people um, that are potentially vulnerable that we haven't contacted. Uh, so we're working on getting the data sorted and being able to somehow uh, uh, be able to share that in a, uh, a, a discreet way, should I say. So the Information Commissioner's Office has basically told us that we, um, with care, can give more weight to risk to life than uh, data protection regulations. Uh, but clearly, whatever we do uh, would have to be very carefully managed so that uh, any data that was released was done in small packets and therefore limit uh, the um, uh, possibility of it leaking out further. And there's also other aspects of that um, just by being on a list. Uh, could uh, give people dedu deductible uh, information about uh, somebody. Uh, so we have to be really very cautious with that. So we're working out some protocols of that um, in, in, the, in the meantime. Uh, on the business front, I've had quite a lot of uh, inquiries from local business people, um, one of whom may be present in the virtual room, um, about how... Um, the District Council has been uh, dispensing the uh, funds available for small business support, so £10,000 and £25,000 grants, uh, the cancellation of business rates, uh, with all that, uh, the impact of that. Uh, dealt with one today who, even in the short time between him making an application um, and I think two days later, um, there was a uh, a shift in uh, regulation that allowed him to then make a successful claim, which he's done today. So there's a lot of work going on there. Uh, Self-employed uh, uh, are being covered as well as possible. There's a, a complete gap for people who have uh, limited companies and, and are being paid, uh, partly pay out PAYE, but mostly doing it on dividends because they have no uh, support at all. So there's work uh, that we're doing to try and do that. Vast amounts of work trying to uh, protect people, but as we saw today, the financial impact of all that support that's coming via uh, government is phenomenal. Uh, it's likely that we're already in a recession, and it's quite likely that the financial situation will get an awful lot worse before it gets better. That's a report. Okay. District Council. Stephen, sorry, Sander. Stephen? Yeah, actually, I just wanted to go back to the, the county thing, Kevin, not to say that you didn't give a report, because I thought you'd given lots of updates and different meetings we've had. I just wanted to say, Kevin, that I think that the at least the social media 
presentation of information by the county council is actually really impressive. I think okay, the thank use you. of Twitter and Facebook, I'm sure it's not perfect, I'm sure you know you're doing lots of different things, but it strikes me that the communication of information from the county council, as far as it's possible to measure, seems to me to be quite impressive. I just thought you'd like to know that. Thank you, and uh, I'll feed that back. Yeah. James got a hand. Uh, Right, uh, James, Kevin, James got a hand on. Jane? On one of the emails we had from Joe, it had um, a part of it on it about um, ID cards for people who are volunteering. Is this something we can do so that it makes it easier and people know who we actually are if we go to people's houses? As some of us have done, independently of nothing to do with mutual aid or anything like that, but where I've, I've contacted, I've been in contact with people. This is um, something that's been discussed for the last three yep. or four weeks, as, yep. as you know. Um, and part of the problem, of course, is it, that it's, it's, it's potentially more than an authentication exercise. Yep. Um, and certainly uh, some of the information uh, that I'm getting as the local data controller isn't shareable with anybody other than I know very well personally. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that in itself, Creates a you know a bit of a problem, doesn't it? Uh, I'm not sure we've got a, a, an answer for that. Jane, if you want to, if you want to demonstrate, oh, I have ID set to do with South Cams. It's separate, Bex. Um, but that one of the things that was on that let, uh, last email from Joe actually had um, a ID badge that had been done in Publisher. I mean, is this something that can be done? Who do, who would do this? Is it do, would you have to contact? Who would do this? Who do you contact? So I think the uh, example in the thing that we got from Joe, which was uh, one of, one of the local villagers, I think uh, went went ahead uh, and, and did that uh, yeah. with some support from the district council in terms of yes, we're happy for you to do it. But the difficulty is that there's uh, lots of small parishes where actually the personal contact is is much easier established okay. you know there's there's five or ten people that have together between them who are probably all on the parish council anyway have, have agreed that they they will be the people with the idea deep okay. so that it's just give some reassurance the, the problem with us i mean the mutual aid i think you bet you can tell us 40 odd uh, active volunteers at the minute or whatever it is then becomes more difficult okay okay any other questions? Right, Joe. Um, 314 correspondence, Joe. No. Um, councillors' issues for agendas for the next meeting. Um, has anyone got any specific issues? No. Kieran? Kieran. Yeah. Sorry, just. Um uh is this the point to discuss when the next meeting will be um well i guess we need to discuss what we're doing with meetings can we confirm that the next meeting will be our, our usual full parish uh, meeting that would be on the second tuesday in may so uh, i've seen the suggestions from back that we um reduce the number of meetings back to normal and absolutely disagree that we should do that. I think the nature of the crisis is such that we should be, even if they're very short meetings, we should at least convene and continue convening once a week until such time that we think that we're getting all our bases covered. Back. Um, I sent an email around um, asking if people had specific reasons why they thought weekly meetings would be necessary. Um, I didn't get any any answers with any suggestions, um, not from you, Brian, or from anybody else. Yeah, I chose not to respond to that, thank you. So I'm going to suggest um, that if people think um, that there might be issues arising that need to be dealt with quickly, or if there's a group of councillors who want to discuss um, funding um, initiatives to do with the coronavirus, um, that what you do is form a working group um, to have weekly meetings and then feed those back into the monthly um, parish council meeting. Um, my major concern um, with this, having, having talked to um, 
Joe and Claire, is that weekly meetings are uh, making them official parish council weekly meetings is correct, creating an awful lot of extra work for our staff. Um, and I didn't feel um, that that was justified um, by any explanation that anyone's come up with. So we've got, we're right, right in the middle of a crisis. We're at the uh, de delivery in the shop uh, end of trying to make sure that we're protecting, particularly protecting the vulnerable. We haven't taken any decision over spending any money. We haven't uh, applied, for example, for any of the discretionary grants. We saw today again uh, the Tesco Bank bags funding that is available. So as a, uh, as a, as a parish council, effectively, we've pretty much sat on our hands as far as this is concerned. I mean, we've, we've spoken about uh, the problems that are arising much, but we actually haven't done anything. Um, well, so there, there have been many opportunities for people to make suggestions about what they thought that we could do. Um, and we're very limited in our abilities as a parish council. Um, oh, now no, it may we're not. That, it may be that a working group untrammeled by the processes of a normal meeting could do a bit of brainstorming and come up with suggestions. Um, but it doesn't seem a particularly good use of councillors and staff time. And I suspect that many of us are involved in other village-wide uh, initiatives, which we'd like to be spending that time on. Um, so I would suggest that that's the most efficient way of moving forward. Um, Stephen. Sorry, I forgot. I, th I thought I was already muted. Um, I think part of the problem in terms of the potential email discussion regarding this and the situation we're in now is that um, we have collectively, well maybe it's a small number of us, been unable to have this discussion and we've been unable to agree and there are clearly very strong views on both sides in relation to this and as a result when the email came around asking for this I wrote a reply about five times in the last week, some of them quite lengthy, explaining in detail why I thought it was important. And then I thought to myself that actually I had already made those points. And I would actually argue that this discussion that we're currently having about whether or not to have a meeting each week is to some extent a bit of a pointless discussion because we have, me included, set out our views in relation to this on both sides of the argument very very clearly a number of times over the last few weeks there is no central ground there is no meeting of mind in relation to it and i do not believe that i am going to be convinced to change my view on the matter in the same way as i don't think that others are going to be convinced to change their view either i think the most productive thing to do would actually rather than having another round the houses discussion about it which if that's what we want to do and we can do would actually be just to simply take a vote about whether or not, as a group of parish councillors, we believe that we should continue to have a meeting each week. And if the vote is to have that, then so be it. And if the vote is not to have that, then so be it. I think we'd be better placed just having a vote on it, because I don't really think having another big argument about it is actually going to help us. If you make that a proposal, I'll second it. I'd like to say something at this point. Um, the meetings of the parish council are not only the meetings of the full parish council, they're also recreation committee meetings, they're planning uh, committee meetings. And many people would be involved in a recreation ground committee meeting next week and a planning committee meeting the week after that. So I don't see that it, it, this adds much to the extra meetings we have. And I think we ought to go ahead with parish council meetings at a very regular frequency because of where we are in relation to this crisis. It's a very fast moving picture and we need to be able to meet on a regular basis and to know in advance when those meetings are going to be. Jo. Um, just to say, obviously, tonight we've been discussing things and you've been saying, let's defer that, we'll refer it to the next recreation, next yeah. FNG, which, which is fine. So um, if we are going to continue having weekly meetings as extra full so that everyone can be involved do you want us to include so um so for, for example next year you say that was going to be a recreation meeting we just have it as an extra full but we make sure we put everything on there that would normally have been yeah. on a recreation and do that so we we still follow a bit of a schedule yeah. with so we've got so we've got yeah. no change yes yeah 
Because otherwise okay. I'm just concerned things are going to get missed that should be on a committee. Um, Stephen's proposed, Brian seconded. All those in favour of continuing the meeting, please stick your hands up now, please. Continuing weekly meetings, specifically. Weekly meetings. Yeah. Right. Nine. Those against? Abstentions. Thank you. So uh, it's carried that we carry on having weekly meetings. Right, uh, we, uh, we have to go into camera now. I suggest that we take a comfort break for a couple of minutes um, and then we, we'll deal with the other two items when we get in camera, okay? You have to do extra yep. time, Kevin. You're gonna, yeah, we're gonna have to extend we, we, we will, yeah. Time. Sorry. We got, when we come back, we'll get. So if you want to propose this, Stephen, when we get back, that'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Do we? Right. We can just stay where I we are. I was going to say, do it. If we stay where we are, just going to. Um, yeah, he needs to stay spiel, doesn't he, before before members of the public go. I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. So I'll be leaving you now. Have a good night all. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Yep, thank you. Thank you.